All right, round two of our triple Mirrodin draft here on Rough Drafts. We'll keep this. It's not exciting, but we got a couple things that cycle. Fix our mana, so forth. None of our big hitters at this point. Uh, we'll just lead on the spell bomb since we can cycle that for free. That's <laughs> the only reason it's in the deck. Uh, well, we'll play Copper Mirror. Might as well. Point led on island into island. This makes me think probably flyers and artifacts. Ooh, skeleton chart is pretty good. What's our opponent return? Ooh, there's plenty of slag worm. Return for one black mana or three colorless. Target artifact creature card from their graveyard to their hand. But we're just going to play this goblin replica. I always try to pay four for that. And... Um... Yeah, we'll attack for one. I don't think playing the Chromatic Sphere is that important, and cycling Life Spark isn't that important at the moment. We don't really need to worry about killing the Skeleton Shard yet, but eventually we probably will have to. Alright, that's a good blocker, but they have to remove a counter whenever it attacks or blocks at the end of combat. So it will get smaller and smaller. We can't really attack into it though. So I think we're just going to play this regenerator, Tell Jalad Exiled, pass the turn. I guess that's a good synergy with Skeleton Shard. They can use up all the counters, get it back with the Skeleton Shard. Frogmite. Eh, not that much of a threat. All of our artifact hate should end up being good in this matchup by the looks. And Plated Slag Worm is pretty huge. Thought cast. Alright, draws our opponent a couple cards. They gonna attack? They are going to attack. Alright, so they get in for three, but then they're going to have to remove a counter. Ooh, Journey of Discovery. One, two, three, four, five. So we can actually entwine that. So I think we're just going to attack with our Teljalad Exiled. Our opponent can block and return Frogmite to their hand if they want. Still eats into their mana a little bit to cast it. So I think that's worth it, just because of that. Yeah, it looks like they're going to do it. And then we'll play our forest, then we will entwine our journey of discovery. And I think we'll get mountain... Eh, we can just get double mountain, I think. Get to put them both into play, play this chromatic sphere and pass the turn. They're going to bounce their Frogmite back to their hand. So we might have to kill that Skeleton Shard eventually. It is annoying. And it will give them a lot of blockers for our Plated Slag Worm. Is this the Frogmite coming down again? Domineer. You control target artifact creature. Um, alright, well. That means we can't get rid of the Skeleton Shard with what we have in hand. And there's the Frogmite. I'm just going to attack with the Condor. Hit us down to 15. Yeah, that Domineer is pretty annoying. We don't even have many good targets for it, but that's a good one, because it keeps us from killing Skeleton Shard. Uh, let's 
Um. Yeah, let's cycle this spell bomb. Another big creature is not bad. And a forest. So. Well, I guess we will attack again. We can always regenerate if our opponent goes to double block or something. Blocks with Fragmite. Fragmite dies. Play the land. Play our Plated Slagworm. With a Plated Slagworm out there, Blinding Beam is pretty devastating. Opponent gets their Fragmite back, so I can cast it for one mana at the moment. Another land. Fragmite. I want to be aware of Bartering Blood as a way to get rid of our Plated Slagworm. If they can kill one of our other creatures and then barter in Blood. Alright. Wandering Sentry gets to look at our hand. Sees our Hunter. Well, we basically just keep smashing every turn and hope that that is good enough. No attacks. Ooh, Pyrite Spellbomb is pretty sweet. Well. Let's attack with both. That commits us to playing Pyrite Spellbomb on the Wandering Mage if they block. Is that alright? Yeah, I think that's fine. We have enough mana. Wouldn't mind getting a non-artifact creature off the battlefield since it can't come back. Alright, so we regenerate there. Kill the Frogmite. Then we play Pyrite Spellbomb. Kill the Wandering Sentry. And then play our Hunter. I expect our opponent to get back the Frogmite once again. So they have a lot of blockers. <laughs> almost infinite blockers. But luckily we have some pretty big attackers. And we got those two blinding beams that we're going to draw into eventually. And then we attack for 8, 12, 13. We have 15 power on board with just what we have right now. And sooner or later, we'll draw into another Goblin Replica or our Shatter to get rid of the Skeleton Shard, which is also pretty annoying. That's what's giving him the infinite blockers, is that Skeleton Shard. So if we get that off the table, it's really unfortunate. Maybe I should have played differently and left up mana for this Goblin Replica. I was not really expecting Domineer. I think we're also to the point where we can just... Uh, Sack this chromatic sphere to draw a card. Looming hover guards. All right, that's a big flyer. We're gonna put our yeah copper mirror on top of our library. Fair enough. That is annoying. Points down to one card. We know we're drawing our silly mirror. Uh, let's crack our chromatic sphere. Uh, planes, not exciting. Play copper mirror. If we attack with our plated slagworm, they could theoretically block with everything? Is that worth it? They would have an empty board. And let's just pass. We really need to draw an answer to that skeleton shard before we go on that plan. Or if our opponent attacks, then we'll start attacking again. If they attack with their looming hover guards, that does free us up to attack with our Telgelad Exiled, unless they have something else to. Ooh, Solemn. Solemn's sweet. Man, our Molder Slug seems so good in this matchup. Well, Skeleton Shard is a problem, but still pretty good. 
That's some uh, serious value. Solemn plus skeleton shard. They're gonna get in there. Come on, artifact destruction. <laughs> Molder slug. So can we even play Molder slug? I think we can. I think we have to go attacking majorly. All out attack. Try to get some stuff off the battlefield. And then play Molder Slug. Hope it doesn't get countered. That would be really bad for us. Blocks there. Blocks there. Blocks there. Alright. They get to draw a card. And we get to play Molder Slug. Which will at least slow down their development, unless they can just kill it. Then keep getting things back to their hand, but now they're also going to have to sack thing every something every upkeep. Alright, they get back the Solemn. Oh, they have removal spell? Oh, Thirst, okay. So they can discard the Solemn if they want to. Nim Replica gets discarded. Well, they have to sack their Condor, I assume. Yep. Well, unless they drew an answer, we just keep attacking and hope that that gets there. Still, an Artifact Destruction spell would be great. There's the Solemn. The other thing is, they need to keep an Artifact alive? Or they'll have to sack their skeleton shard. Uh, assuming they don't kill the Molder Slug. Wizard Replica can sack it to counter a spell, unless its controller plays two. Not especially relevant. We have so much mana. Gonna keep attacking. Interesting. So hit us for three. Come on, let's draw something. We gotta sack our copper mirror. Uh, another forest is not what we were hoping for. Oh, we swing with both. Foam's gonna block with Solemn. Now we'll play a forest. So they're going to sack their wizard replica, probably get back their slalom. Uh, well, we just haven't drawn our good cards in that matchup, in this matchup. We have the artifact destruction, and we have blockers for flyers, and we just haven't been able to find them, unfortunately. And our opponent's been able to just grind us down with that skeleton shard. And the Solemn Loop is pretty sweet. They are getting a mana and drawing a card every time they do this, which hard to keep up with. I think we would have won this game easily if it wasn't for Skeleton Shard, honestly. That's the, the card that has kept them in this game. And is most likely going to win them this game. Somber Hover Guards. Oh, so now we're on a two turn clock. Well, we got to draw something this turn, basically. Although, if our opponent doesn't have a counter or removal spell, Blinding Beam would steal this game. Come on, Blinding Beam for the win. No artifacts. Come on. We got two. Hmm, I don't think that does it. I think it it gets us a redraw, maybe? Goblin Replica. We gotta kill the Solemn? Uh, 
if our opponent has nothing, then I think this gets us a redraw. But it means we can't kill the skeleton shard. Because it's going to force our opponent to block with the hover guards to stay alive. Man, despite how much value that skeleton, sh car ugh, skeleton shard has generated, we were still about to draw away from winning this game. Alright, pass back. We still we still have a shot. We get the redraws. Gets back to Solemn. But our opponent has to sack the skeleton shard. So I guess we did get rid of it eventually. So let's see what our opponent can play. We might still be able to steal this game. Could be possible. What do they got? There's the Solemn. Man, that card has generated so much value. They've gotten so many lands out of their deck and drawn so many cards. They're down to 10 cards in their library after this. And we are at 19. So that's a lot of value. Jeez, gets to bring another artifact back from their graveyard to their hand. <laughs> Uh, is it Artifact or Artifact Creature? Okay, they're getting back Frogmite. That is an odd choice, considering they have four mana and only one Artifact. But okay. I guess they want to leave up one mana for something. Well, they have Crystal Shard. But they can't play the Frogmite. Or do they have a, a land drop still? Alright. <laughs> We got we got the redraws for Blinding Beam for the win. We dropped a three. I think a removal spell. No, a removal spell puts him to one. It's got to be Blinding Beam. That's the only option. Come on. Come on. Oh, Electrostatic Bolt. This might do it. It might keep us alive. Uh, so what do we do here? We attack with everything. They can block there. Block there, take four. Alright, so I think we just have to attack with these, with our Molder Slug and our Plated Slag Worm. See what our opponent does. They're going to block both. Probably going to bounce one back to their hand. So this Electrostatic Bolt should keep us alive. Alright, they're going to Bounce the scavengers. Solemn dies. They draw a card, unfortunately. Then... Uh, we lose. Electrostatic Bolt can't kill that thing. Uh, man, did we have to get... I don't know. That was a crazy game. Oh my god. We have so many things that would have won us that game. We had a lot of draw steps. Uh, oh boy. Well, we got the Blinding Beam. And a bunch of Mirror. I'll just lead on Pyrite Spellbomb. No big hitters, though. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. We're going to need to draw some stuff. And maybe some things. Well, at least we're getting some redraws with Chromatic Sphere and Pyrite Spellbomb. Another island. Alright, let's... Uh, let's not attack. Let's just... Uh, let's Golden Mirror and Chromatic Sphere. We're going to need to start drawing into lands at some point. Crystal Shard. Well, that's bad when you're pinched on mana. Archers can't really play. Well, I guess we just... Hmm. 
How do we want to tap? Let's tap all our mirror. Goblin replica. Pass the turn. We're probably going to have to cycle this chromatic sphere if our opponent taps out. Somber hover guards. Alright, that's fine. So now we get to sack this. Draw a card. Ugh, plated slagworm. Blinding beam. Well, let's shoot that down and tack with everything. This is, that crystal shard is eventually going to wreck us if we don't draw mana. Another somber hover guards. Mana? Ugh. Alright, let's electrostatic bolt and attack with everything. We got our opponent to 12 and we got double blinding beam. We are just stuck on two lands which is killing us. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Skeleton Shard doesn't do anything at the moment. Ooh, Frogmite. Alright. Come on, lands. Alright, there's a land. Which is actually really sweet. Now we can... Uh, let's just play Crystal, crystal Shard. And we can start pinging. Or granite shard, not crystal shard. They have. This is like the, the shard matchup. Good lord. What do they got? Can't be blocked as long as defending player controls an artifact. Alright. Well, let's deal the damage to our opponent. Another land, that's good. But they have a double shard activation. Hmm. I would like to play this archers, but if we do, we kind of get wrecked. I think we just got a pass here. We can play Blinding Beam as an instant if we need to. Because they can activate that once on our end step, then activate it again on their turn and bounce one of our creatures. There's the Condor. Let's see if they attack. Alright, they do attack. So now I think we just entwine this Blinding Beam. Taps everything down. King our opponent. Another forest is good. Um, do we attack with everything? Yeah, I think we just attack with everything. Put our opponent to six. We can ping them to five and then maybe attack them to death. Thoughtcast draws a couple cards, a land, Pewter Golem, I think we got it, no, we're one mana, one damage short, well, we get to ping our opponent, oh, we drew the planes, now we got it. We were one damage short from the blinding beam kill. Well, we get to tap down creatures, attack with everything, put our opponent to one, and then granite shard for the win. Whoo! Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a good time for the planes. Well, we got stuck on two lands and we won that one. I don't I am not understanding our deck or this format. Uh we seem to get blown out in game games 1 and then do well after that. Alright, well we got an Archers, and a Blinding Beam. I guess we'll see what we'll draw. I think it's worth keeping though. 
Opponent's going to six, which I'm not going to complain about that. Protection from artifacts and reach seems like the most amazing abilities in this matchup because all of their creatures either are like 3-2 flyers or they have reach. Land. Alright, we'll play this spell bomb so we can cycle it. Hopefully draw into lands. Another island for our opponent. Oh, there's land. Uh, let's play planes and chromatic sphere. We are going to cycle this spell bomb end of turn, I believe. Nim Replica. Another forest. Ooh, Journey of Discovery. Hmm. We can play that just to get lands in our hand. We could also just put lands on the battlefield. Is that worth it? Let's, uh... Let's search for lands. Mountain and mountain. And then just pass the turn. We are going to be taking three from that thing, unfortunately. Opponents on the all island plan. Thought gas draws a couple. Alright, take three from Nim Replica. Another land. Alright, let's crack this. Adding. Doesn't it? And we'll add green. See if we can draw something. Pyrite spell bomb. Play that. And we don't need to tap mana though. Play pyrite spell bomb. Play the mountain. And we're just gonna kill this because we know that they have uh, affinity cards in their deck. All right. So we're sort of stabilized. There's the hover guards. Well, the good news is we should be able to just match them with this archer and stonewall them hopefully uh... so hopefully we can just block for a while if they can kill our archers that's bad news crystal shard here is annoying too to bounce our archers Shatter will be good. I'm glad that's we have that in our hand. Frogmite. Alright, Frogmite's not too much of a threat here. Uh, well, Forest. The Hunter. And we'll just pass. We're not going to attack with our archers. Leave me up a mana in case our opponent finds their crystal shard. Scavenger can get back the Nim Replica and recast it. Not bad. Uh, is it worth using our Shatter for a chance to get a blowout here? If we attack with our Hunter and they block with Frogmite and the Scavenger, which seems like the most logical blocks, we can shatter the Frogmite and get a two for one. I think we try it. A little risky, but I think it's worth the risk. If they block in an unconventional way or to play around shatter, then we could end up getting blown out. Well, they're just going to take it. Well, that works. Um... Yeah, so we'll just play Tell Jalad Exiled, play a mountain, pass the turn, leave up Shatter. We have 8 power, so there's some chance that we could get in there with a Blinding Beam kill. Pewter Golem is pretty good. Alright, let's draw something else big I think would be best. Well, play Iron Mirror. Play Golden Mirror and pass the turn. If they want to sack a Nim Replica to kill a mirror, that is fine.
If they decide to start attacking, uh, it's just that looming hover guards. Yeah, that's annoying. I'm gonna bounce one of our mirror, put it back on top, so we're gonna have to draw it again next turn. We still have them pretty much stone mauled from attacking, though. I believe. Do we want to kill? Yeah, we probably can't. We could kill the pewter golem right here, but I don't know if it's worth it. Uh, sure. They have a lot of artifact matters cards that don't really matter against our deck. Not very much. Still got a lot of good draws in our deck. And our opponent can't really attack unless they have some sort of I don't even know. Removal spell or pump spell. Ooh, electrostatic bolt. Alright, we'll just keep passing. Sit on our action spells for now. Uh, what's this? Wizard replica. Alright. And wizard replica. So our opponent is empty handed, is the good news. And we're still fairly stable. I mean, they got way more creatures than us, but. We still have things kind of locked down. Uh-oh. Now they get to look at our hand. Well, that's going to make the blinding beam kill a little harder against this full board. So you basically want to keep drawing creatures. They might not be able to attack, though, because of Electrostatic Bolt. Now let's play Chromatic Sphere. We can use that as a redraw. And our opponent can't really just Alpha Strike unless they're going to kill us. Well, there's no reason to do that now. Let's sack this, add a green, draw a forest, pass the turn. Because if they try to alpha strike, then we have our blinding beam online. But if they keep drawing action and we keep drawing nothing, that will eventually be a problem. Another blinding beam. Whoo! Well, if our opponent ever tries to attack, we pretty much should be able to win. Another hover guards. Now, this doesn't do them much good because that has protection from artifacts and that regenerates. So they just are going to have to do a bunch of regeneration. The problem is we can't tap down enough stuff right now. The other consideration is our opponent is way short on time compared to us because their deck is so grindy. So time could come into this too. Come on creatures I think we want. Well. I guess we play plated slagworm. The big daddy. See what our opponent does. They draw something else. Skeleton shard, not very relevant at the moment. Although I guess it can they can start sacking Nim Replica to kill like our mirror and getting it back. They go on the big attack. Well, we get to kill a hover guard. And I think we're just going to electrostatic bolt the other one. If they want to sack both wizard replicas, that's fine. Forest. So let's shatter skeleton shard. Is there any way to start attacking here? 
We just can't tap down enough stuff. If we attack with this, we could tap down both pewter golems. Attack, yeah. I think we gotta just keep passing at this point, unfortunately. As sad as it sounds, this one might be one that gets close to going to time if we don't draw anything. And our opponent never attacks. Opponent passes. Well, let's stop drawing land. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 5 lands left in our deck. The other problem is we will go to time before our opponent. But we have both goblin replicas left. We have other big creatures. Clockwork Condor. Alright, that's not a real threat. There we go. That's that's a good draw. Goblin Replica. Still not sure how we win this game though. If our opponent just never attacks. Forest. Alright, down to four lands in our deck. We could use our pinger. That would be very helpful. Uh, the shard. Man, this is going to be an intense game. All right, Worms can forger is sweet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How much power do they have? Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They have a ton of power. But. How much, uh, we can make that seven? Hmm. I don't know what to put these counters on. We gotta play Worms Kid Forger, I just don't know what to, what to do with it. Can make this a seven, seven trample? Protection from artifacts is interesting, but it doesn't really win us the game. Cause they can just trade with it. We gotta start getting through their creatures sooner or later. They got those regenerators. Well, let's play Wormskin Forger. And where do the counters go? I guess we'll spread them around a bit. Make our protection from artifact guy bigger. Make our trampler big enough to attack through a single pewter golem. Alright, we gotta draw something though. Need to draw it. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen lands. So we still have four lands we're gonna run into. Alright. Molder slug is what we need. Molder slug. We need it like this turn though. If we wait too long, it won't it won't do it. Alright, another forest. I think we're going to deck ourselves, honestly. <laughs> How do we get through this damage? Molder Slug is the start. That's what we need. Oh my goodness. So 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, we've drawn all the lands out of our deck, so we're going to stop drawing lands. That's good news. Well, we have one land left, but we got to basically stop drawing lands. What's our opponent have? If they ever try to attack... Another goblin replica. Well, I guess we play it. Do we need to just start killing their stuff? I guess maybe we need to attack with this plated slagworm, but these pewter golems... Let's, we gotta do something. Tap the pewter golems, make it so they don't untap. Then attack with our plated slag worm. We gotta start getting through these creatures one way or another. Blocks with Armir. Um, all right, let's play this land. Pass the turn. 
maybe that was too aggressive a use of our blinding beam. Ugh, chromatic sphere, not what we wanted. Alright, let's get back to attacking. Gotta start getting in some damage. We're getting to desperation time. Blocks. 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 Well, we're definitely killing the the non-artifact. Alright, well, we're getting our opponents... I guess we can Blinding Beam again now? Is that worth it? Blinding Beam keeps those tapped down, taps down two other things. I think we actually have to play this Chromatic Sphere and crack it. Chromatic Sphere. Crack it to draw a card. There's Molder Slug. Play Molder Slug. And... Blinding Beam. Tap the non-artifacts. That's the turn. We might be doing it. They can start sacking their tapped artifacts. Crystal Shard. Well, that lets them bounce and replay one of their artifacts. Solemn. Man, this is going to be close. Let's sack a goblin replica, kill this clockwork condor. Got a sack of mirror. Well, it's attack time. One. Attack, 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 just attack with everything? Yeah? Do we want to sack this goblin replica right now? Probably not. We drew our last land. We know we got that pinger left in our deck. Blocks, blocks, blocks. We get to regenerate. When it draws a card from Solemn, the time is still somewhat an issue. When I ask to sack an artifact, sacks a crystal shard. It looks like they have lethal damage, but we can sack this goblin replica. So I think we're going to win because of this. Goblin replica, even if they regenerate, it removes it from combat. So we go to four, untap, sack our mirror, and oh my goodness, we got there! <laughs> <laughs> oh, to the finals again. What a crazy, insanely long match. That was almost an hour for round two. Oh, my God. Well, we did it, though. Jeez.